the Bibi Stockholm was supposed to house up to 500 asylum seekers. But tonight, that number will be zero, following the discovery of Legionella. Now, this is a bacteria that can be life-threatening under certain circumstances. Now, despite the bars being presented as a part of the solution to the sheer cost of housing asylum seekers that stands at about £3.6 billion a year, not only was it presented as a solution, it was also seen as a symbolic gesture of the government making this country less attractive to asylum seekers. Right now, the emptying barge behind me also stands as a symbol of the government's failures in immigration. Of course, its flagship policy was Rwanda, which has never gotten off the ground and currently sits in the hands of the Supreme Court. Now, this week, we've heard other destinations mooted, but we'll have to wait to see how they develop. Right now, here in Portland, the opposition towards the barge behind me is only going to intensify, and it's come from across the political spectrum. This is what the mayor here has had to say. I'm shocked, shocked and, and horrified that human beings can be endangered in, in this way. We, we were told that all of the checks were, were in place and that everything was supposed to be safe, and it quite clearly isn't. Now, there had been other safety concerns also raised about the very controversial barge, notably around fire safety. But the discovery of this bacteria has presented new challenges for the government's plans. Now, this is what the Home Office has had to say today. They said, following these results, the Home Office has been working closely with the UK HSA and following its advice in line with long-established public health processes and ensuring all protocol from Dorset Council's Environmental Health Team and Dorset NHS is adhered to. No individuals on board have presented with symptoms of Legionnaires and asylum seekers are being provided with appropriate advice and support. The samples taken relate only to the water systems on the vessel itself and therefore carry no direct risk indication for the wider community of Portland, nor do they relate to fresh water entering the vessel. Now, following this, what we're likely to see is greater criticism intensifying from both sides of the political spectrum, from those who are supporting greater restrictions on immigration and those who oppose them. Those who support the government's plans are raising questions over just how competent the government is to actually carry out its various plans, considering how regularly they seem to be thwarted. And those opposing them are raising questions over the government's morality and ethics, over the conditions that it is willing to put some of the most traumatised people in the world through. People escaping war and famine now find themselves being told that they have been cast from the, from the land onto the waters, according to, to critics. Following the, the discovery of this bacteria now, both of those voices are likely to be emboldened and be galvanised. Studio. Thanks, Simeon. Well, joining me now is Steve Smith, CEO of the charity Care for Calais. Now, they've successfully fought to keep some asylum seekers off the Bibby Stockholm and have been in touch with those who have been sent onto the vessel this week. Now, as you heard, the Home Office are claiming that... The people on board were given appropriate advice and support. Is that your understanding? That's not my understanding at all. Uh, we became aware of this from um, a Sky uh, News release earlier in the day. I think probably around 10 to 1 this afternoon. We were in touch with people on board shortly after that. At that stage, the people we were talking to had not been informed that there was a Legionnaire's disease problem on board. Added to that, and possibly worse, they also hadn't been told that not to drink the water, not to take a shower, to avoid the water system at all costs, and that they were going to be evacuated. They simply had no idea that that was going to be the case. We since understand that uh, evacuation has started. It took several hours. I mean, we were talking to people at something like 20 past one. I think the evacuation may have lasted through till about seven o'clock in the evening. But we saw the letter that was issued to those that were being taken off the barge. And the really shocking thing is that it mentioned that the water sampling took place on the 25th of July. I understand since that the results were known on the 7th of August. That's the day that people were scheduled to board the barge and that barge went ahead. Known by so who? Happened? When you say there were no, that's quite key information. Um, who, who do you understand knew on, on October the 7th? Uh, let me go back. I know from the letter that's been issued to those leaving the barge that it says the water sampling took place on the 25th of July. 
we know that the boarding of the barge started on the 7th of August. I've been told that the results were known on the 7th of August. Even if they weren't, even if the results weren't known, why would you board the barge before those health checks, the results of those health checks were known? It, yeah. It's just absurd. Well, well maybe because it stopped the boats <laughs> week. Um, yeah, it, it, it is, it's always possible, given that there's been a lot of uh, news management around this whole story. How, how much concern is there from the people you've been in touch with that they've contracted a potentially deadly bacterial infection? Well, that's another point in the Home Office release. It says that uh, advice and guidance will be given. We know that that advice and guidance or support was slow in coming out because we were telling people not to drink the water before they were told by staff on board the boat. Um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of how they feel about it, clearly there's stress, there's uncertainty. The bottom line is, though, they don't want to be seen as troublemakers. These are people who, because of the authorities in the countries they've escaped from, have a fear of authority and don't want to therefore put themselves in a position where their asylum claims can be challenged. And so, I mean, what should happen now, as far as you're concerned? I mean, the government will presumably just clean up the boat and get people back on. Well, that's our concern, obviously. OK, so for several weeks now, we've been saying this is completely unacceptable for asylum seekers. It's going to be overcrowded. It was only ever designed for 220, and they're putting more than 500 on board. It looks like it's an extreme fire hazard, although we've been reassured that fire safety checks have been done. Well, you can that's, only imagine. Yeah, I mean, that, that's been sort of overturned effectively, hasn't it? Well, the government have said that they've done fire checks and everything's OK. Um, I would be surprised if that's the case, trying to put more than twice as many people on board a, a boat as it was intended for with long, narrow corridors and only a couple of fire escapes. But even so, uh, in terms of the overcrowding, the potential for transmission of diseases, and it appears to all intents and purposes, I know it's not a detention facility, but it looks like a detention facility. And for those who have been in detention, they could be re-traumatized. This is entirely inappropriate. In any case, in terms of how many go aboard, it's 500 or so, even if it maxes out. The numbers in hotels at the moment are around 50,000. We're making an enormous issue over this barge when actually the primary problem is trying to sort the asylum process where there is something like over yeah, 170,000 people. Well, Steve, Steve Smith, thank you very much for your time.